you need to be established in that place from where the action unfolds naturally, spontaneously. So this, it's like preparation for the household actually goes through fostering, forging oneself through some discipline, some spiritual practice. When one is, effectively speaking, ready for that, where one would be tested and a plenty. And it will not be easy, but then you can lean on. See? You can lean on something. What can you lean on? You can only lean on yourself there. Great. Okay. So over the last year, more or less, I've had like a cold basically every month, more or less. So then body's health has been relatively uh, poor. And the things that started prior to that is that started a new job and then I met a woman and then there's, there's like a relationship starting and then it's like went into drama and I acted my worst self and abandoned men and all kinds of things coming up. But, um, and like part of, part of what I like brought into that was this uh, proving myself and so that's been something I've been doing since I was young and in relation to, we're, you're just speaking of the sort of cosmic and the parents, so like, especially with my father, uh, who would uh, tell me I was stupid and uh, otherwise didn't seem to know how to express his care particularly well. Um, so, I'm giving somewhat of a biography because I'm like, I'm, I'm bit like, okay, so when I was uh, 19, like I went to university, but then I dropped out because I, uh, I, I was having difficulty making friends and I was afraid of going to class and just isolating myself and uh, reading a lot. And I found like Herman Hesse, uh, like Steppenwolf, uh, so that book, and I related a lot to that book, which is interesting because it's about an old man who's a, a very intellectual, isolated man. And, and, um, and so there's this part where he goes to his friend's house. Part of what had me interested in coming here is a sense of like the, the burning through karma. And as I said, like the last year I've had like, there's like three months of insomnia and a lot of pain. Felt like I was recapitulating my childhood. I guess uh, I appreciate when Alex asked his question uh, a few evenings ago where it brought the conversation. And and uh, so I guess I brought some of those stories as like, it's like the mode that I've appreciated and what drew me to come here was that when you talk about like the Bhagavad Gita that, that uh, and like connecting it to things of uh, import, then that's uh, really... I just, I love that as a way of communicating. So I guess uh, I'm, my, my question is more just like, what are your reflections for me given this sort of circumstance? So far we've spoken about this with all this drawing the diagrams, making this analogies on the pictorial manner of representing it so visually more graspable. <coughs> but I want to say something. You asked me for my reflection, so my reflection first and foremost, what I feel like saying to you is that this very, this moment, this right, this very moment, right now as you spoke this, I listened, there's a crickets outside, this like, this interaction taking place, 
right, is the result of billions of years of evolution. Every moment, we could say, is that. Like tomorrow would be billions of years of evolution plus one more night. <laughs> See? What do I mean by that is... We seem to forget this by placing incredible attention to what happened <clears throat> to us in our lives, in our life, in a manner of where these certain marked points, events, certain events that we call events, because between those points, it's less eventful. And then we connect them with lines. See? From this event to that event to that event. It's like when we sit down, and now I need to write my biography. And this biography will be for work, as a CV. Then it has to have that language. Or is this going to be biography for my book? For my blog? Or my YouTube channel. So, like, you see, and what are we gonna, what are gonna we what are we gonna highlight there? Where are we gonna place an emphasis? So, therefore, what I feel like saying, first of all, first and foremost, as just get going, you're asking me what's my reflection. This very moment is a result of billions of years of evolution. this very moment. So you find yourself right now and all that what went into this and beyond, you see, far more than what there is can be held in the recesses of the memory. I want you to simply kind of being able to at times flip this whole thing, you see? So as to see this for what it is. Because you want me to give reflection on what? On Prince Mushkin? Or on a Stephen Wolf? Or how you are feeling in resonance with the characters in your life? If you are attentive enough, and I trust you are, it's impossible, you see? It's absolutely impossible. Impossible just for what you said, to give a true reflection. Did you see what I mean? Well, you, hold on a second, just... And you wrote it on the list right now. Are you sure that if this was one month before or one month after, that this would have been the same? Maybe in five days' time you would feel like giving a, a different accent and emphasis on what happened in your life. See? So, a reflection on what? Do you see what I mean? Reflection on what? Everything that you carry within yourself, every sense of that personal sense of achievement mixed with the sense of inadequacy, every insecurity and any and every sense of that audacious spirit of that taking the plunge, all that, all that, all that, all that is a kaleidoscope of what forms and informs you about your personality. But something else entirely is taking place as well. Entirely. 
Have you ever kept diaries, journals for yourself? Have you noticed when do you write usually when you do or when you did? In the morning or in the evening? In the daytime? It would be often at cafes during the day. Yeah. So these diaries were what the emphasis in the diary was when you were writing something for yourself. Uh, it's changed. At times it would be around pain and uh, also around uh, possible things to do, all the different directions of, uh, uh, that I would want to create or that seem like worthwhile things. Setting intentions, right? Yeah. Intentions kind of like admitting something to yourself. Yeah, and sometimes with uh, if something, yeah, if something eventful or a thing that I marked as an event, then it would be, uh, then I would like to record it for reflection later. How do you find that? How do I find which part? Writing this. In the past, it had been more self-critical, and then more recently. Uh, exploratory. But easy, easy, or difficult? Is it like it just rolls off your pen, rolls off your hand? Is it? Uh, well, if it doesn't roll off my pen, then I will just go do something else. Okay. Yeah. And when you read back this, do you occasionally read it back? Yeah. yeah. What do you feel? What do you experience? Heartache. Heartache. Recognition of myself. In what way? We love. Uh, in the sense of, like, where, seeing where I was having difficulties in the past or, or seeing that certain things that I've been turning over in my mind, uh, it felt like I needed to do immediately, but then... I see the things that I really care about. Uh, they have a, a life in me that reoccurs. Do you see all these uh, commentaries? Uh, that resonates, yeah. Commentaries. When you watch nature program, Have you watched nature programs? Like David Attenborough, you know, for example. Uh, yeah. There's narration, there's commentary. Right? And when you go into nature, there's no David Attenborough, thank God. <laughs> this is what I mean by commentaries. See? Something narrates something in a particular accent, in a particular manner, in a particular way, you see? Right. Sometimes, and you ask for reflection, so this is my reflection too. This is my reflection. That something else is taking place. And this is where the foremost energy and attention or to go, foremost. Then there will be less propensity for having commentary to that what is self-evident. The one who loves nature doesn't need truly love, connects, have communion with, feels connected, doesn't need David Attenborough explaining that we are on the verge of Extinction. Because that many species are disappearing. So now it, we are having the privilege to watch those species that are disappearing by the time we watch them, they already disappeared. Making us feel great. That's, 
literally what David Attenborough, in my experience, said in one of the kind of occasionally I became a witness of that, that by the time you're watching this program, half of these species are no longer there. So what I feel like reflecting to you, Alex, is that there is personal context and always will be personal, deeply intimate context. You see? And all this, what went into this, and of course, you just mentioned two, but there's more, there's something, it's not just Dostoevsky's idiot or Herman Hesse, Steppenwolf, and there's so many, so much more went into the formation of who you are. But there are these points that felt more significant. And yet something else is taking place, which is the most significant. So take this also as an opportunity to bring your awareness and redirect your attention to that what then will make this, what is that personal content, just as precious, just as of value, but it's not like in terms of mm, how, how am I doing here? It's like John Lennon said, and I love to repeat that because it's just a, such a great line. Life is what happens to us whilst we're busy making other plans. This is what I mean. Something else of greater significance is taking place. That life is taking place. See? Like, you speak about everything in the same way, and one could almost uh, get a wrong perspective, wrong picture, you know, of like getting with girlfriend, and then, you know, you are not the best of yourself, and right, and... And then, like all these little fragments, all these little kind of like sketches into, what's the most important thing to you right now? What's the most important thing to you right now? How old are you? I'm 36. 36. So, like, at 26, right, this question maybe would not make sense. But at 36, you are not exempt. So what's the most important thing to you right now? Uh, mm, mm, yeah, I, I, I want a family. Hmm? I want a family. Okay. So it's a legitimate desire. A legitimate desire, absolutely. So, and you feel that it's somehow not easy. But yeah, that's a way to put it, yeah. Well, guess what? It's not easy. <laughs> never was, and I don't, know, I don't know if it will be, but that's what it is. To have family is not easy. So, if having a family is what's the most important thing to you right now, then it seems consistent, to me at least, that you are here not just in this immersion, but faced with the predicament, you want to make sure that nothing stands on its way of you fulfill your desire, fulfill your, let's say, aspiration in this domain. So you don't want to mess things up, right? Speaking in that language. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's... A good, honest... Yeah, not to mess up, not to put a lot of energy into... <laughs> that's where the part of the, 
the burning through karma or whatever that is and the all the history is what are these pieces and i find myself during meditation i'm kind of churning over these situations with my ex and with my friends and it's like i didn't want to like be super direct about naming those and it also yeah i just wanted to throw that in cuz And since I'm talking the other pieces, like as far as I appreciate when you talk to uh, Alex, there was uh, like my imagining for how like this would go. This is great. Not to, but uh, I was like, oh, I want to, I was like, get a symbolic message back. Or that was, at least that was the idea I had in my mind of what this interaction would look like. And uh, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Alex had Jesus, you had Prince Mushkin, and <laughs> so, but let's not worry about the symbology now. We can bring the Gita always, it's, it's full of that wisdom which is applicable at any respective level of reality, for sure. There's no, there's no, no one is exempt, you see? So it's like, you can't undo yourself and redo yourself. So maybe what I intuitively felt like saying to you that this moment is a result of billions of years of evolution. And certainly you as you are in this very moment is that it's your own evolution. See? So this kind of, I would say, philosophical predispositions make us stronger psychologically stronger providing of course it is also also backed up by that what creates the possibility for transcending that content transcending these commentaries so we don't identify too much with that stuff because this will in no time rob us of a good sleep, as you have confessed. So, you know, you've been suffering from lately. So, just in practical terms, and this is how it was in so many cultures, in so many ways of life, that before the householder enters the household, he, particularly in terms of that gender, because as the head of the household in the traditional society, as the provider, right, as that emotional anchor, as a man you have to be. Woman's nature is allowed to be changeable all the time. It's in the nature itself. There are so many things that we as men cannot, cannot afford and allow because it's not why we are here in that form. Particularly if we want to conceive family. You see? So this is why I'm speaking about it in a traditional sense, you wanted Gita here, here is something. So, you need to be established in that place from where the action unfolds, naturally, spontaneously. So this, it's like preparation for the household actually goes through fostering, forging oneself through some discipline, some spiritual practice. When one is, effectively speaking, ready for that, where one would be tested, and a plenty. 
And it will not be easy. But then you can lean on. See? You can lean on something. What can you lean on? You can only lean on yourself there. On whatever you generate, whatever you brought forth, whatever that what you brought forth, you can lean at any time. Because that what will be the saving grace in yourself and likewise in your family. It is the place from where all the forgiveness, acceptance, patience, and all the other virtues will come. See? And conceiving of the family is consists of that. It has to be infinite amount of forgiveness, infinite amount of acceptance. Not a certain amount, and then after we exhausted that amount, we slam the door. See? So where do you lean on? Where do you draw the force? Where do you draw the power? So this is what also sadhana represents in terms of the household life. It anchors one in one's own reality. When anchored in your own reality, then all these metaphorically wounds, traumas, they will heal themselves. Scars are there, look at them, you know, enjoy them for what they are. Occasionally it may cause a little bit of nagging pain on a rainy day, on a, you know, on a winter day, on a it's okay, you pull up ourselves and get on. You look strong, good frame, doing pull-ups in the morning, push-ups. Uh, sometimes, the, uh, when I'm moving around a lot, my habits change. Okay, so no, you have to keep, keep at it. If you want to conceive family, you need to be psychologically, emotionally, and physically strong, fit. So no drugs taking... You know, you want family, you want your sperm to be pure, clean, and strong, and the best, and perfumed. No, come on, between us girls speaking, what, what is it? So you, you're saying to me now, what is the most important? So now I'm telling you now, in turn, what is the most important in turn, to fulfill this? I follow. So... And then, of course, you will be forged. You will be made into who you are in that. You would not know the depth of yourself. You would not know the depth of your compassion, pa patience, steadiness, commitment, unless you enter it. How else would you know? No one, none of us know anything in advance. We can only know that in the act So, you will mess up. Don't worry about that. You will mess up. You see? But that is also part and parcel of what it means to conceive family. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, this makes a uh, really... That's the spot. Uh, something that comes up as I hear you say this is I see how I'm, uh, like I, I push myself a lot with my work in that uh, because there's a lot I want to do, it feels like uh, I wear myself down with that. Um, like I'd like to create art, but then I'd like to also live a certain lifestyle and make, so I'm like, oh, I need to make a lot of money and and then I'm also, it's, I don't know, that's like maybe another piece that is in the way of, <laughs> it's helpful when you say that uh, I won't know ahead of time the commitment I have uh, because when I look to the future, I imagine, of course, there'll be more challenges. Um, um, yeah, but... Uh, what you're saying hits the spot for definitely. 
<laughs> Let's continue this conversation, okay? So don't worry about what your dad said and, you know, don't worry about it. It's irrelevant, absolutely. The core of your masculinity cannot be touched by what your dad said. It's unimportant. What's important is you are sitting right now and you want to be a dad, don't you? You want family, that's it. You see? And you are going to make a great dad because you know what should not be said to your son, to your daughter, to discourage. See? Already something already there, a kind of like given that, because you went through that experience of being clamped down. See? So there will be both that masculine side to guide, to support, but also tender side. So don't worry about that stuff. It doesn't matter. Are you with me on that? Yeah.